All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise and the glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Kakadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS, whom rule well, teach well, being great examples towards younger brothers. And peace and blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect out there pushing his word and truth and in sincerity across the four winds in the name of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, pushing to get up out of here, Shalom, to the hopeful elect, the believers, the listeners. Whom have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh by Shema Shah. And what I want to get into this morning, all right, is dealing with how sin, you know, has always been, you know, the plague, you know, that will lead to the downfall of Israel. You know, it was sin. You know, as we go through the scriptures and we study, you know, the history of our forefathers, okay, the thing that, you know, would make us, you know, be an abomination in the sight of the Most High was sin. And mainly the sin of idolatry, worshiping of other gods, you know, which would lead to the corruption of life, as the scriptures say, because through worshiping other gods, you know, the culture that comes with it is a culture to where you add sin unto sin, which is what, what the scriptures call transgression or iniquity, you know, when your lifestyle is based on sin. And one thing that the serpent, you know, Esau Edom has been able to do, you know, is pretty much enchant everyone you know with the convenience of lust and pleasing the flesh you know to your blind to how detrimental sin can be you know and as we've awakened to who we are we've been enlightened you know to these things man and we can see you know how sin can be how how sin ruins our nation how sin ruins the earth you know because ultimately you know it's a play you know amongst us that caused us to fall from glory as a people okay as israelites but also as it's allowed to run rampant in the earth it's destroying the earth man to the point that the lord has to do a great reset all right through war okay now let's go to isaiah 51 it said thus said the lord where is the bill of your mother's divorcement whom i have put away or which of which of my creditors is it to whom i have sold you you know so the lord is pretty much asking rhetorical questions like, okay, who do I owe? Like, do I owe somebody that I had to sell you off? Okay, what's the reason for me selling you off? You know? And so he's asking these questions. And when you go into it, he said, behold, for, it said, behold, for your iniquities, have you sold yourselves and for your transgressions, is your mother put away okay which our mother is our land you know and we was moved and separated you know from that land because of our disobedience man you know and the lord's anger all right his anger he separated us from that land okay he even separated us from that name you know when you go into this last captivity man that, that we've been under okay it says what well, for when i came was there no man when I called? Was there no one to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, in my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh because there is no water and die for thirst. So the Lord is like, okay, is there any shortcoming on my part? You know, am I not able to deliver? Am I not able, all right? To protect and provide you know he's making the he's lord is making the case you know he's like look i dry up the sea i can make the sea dry up okay and the third all the fish will die like the lord showcasing the, the power his ability okay but there's no flaw or shortcoming in the most high it's within us okay matter of fact let's get that in isaiah 59 okay Isaiah 59 and 1 it said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it can that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your power, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So it's the Lord, it's, it's sin that closed the Lord's ears to the prayers of his people, man. You know, us in a sinful state blocks us off. From access to Yahweh Bashim Shah. Okay? And that's why Yahweh Shah was so important because his sacrifice.
period of grace period into where we will be able to crawl back, you know, and, and, and crawl back into the mercy of the Heavenly Father. You know, because right now we're crawling in righteousness, man. We're scribing, we're rehearsing the righteous acts, you know, and the Lord is looking at that acceptable through his son, Yahweh Shai. You know, we trying to do right, man. We want to do right. You see, we thirst for righteousness now, okay? There was a time when we was curious and wickedness, okay? And we see what it, what, what it led to. Now, all right, we get it. You know, the Lord chastening. Now we get it through his chastening and seeing what wickedness leads to. Now we see what wickedness is all about, you know, and the elect will snap into it. Okay, we see the outcome and the end game of letting wickedness run rampant. Okay, to where our curiosity and wickedness has been quenched. And now we have a thirst for righteousness, man. <laughs> okay, and that's going to be fulfilled at the coming of Yahweh Shai. Okay, so when you read... Matthew 5. All right, let's get Matthew 5 and 5. It says, I started at 4. Well, I started at 3. It said, This is Matthew 5 and 3. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay? <laughs> and then you read in the um, NLT, Matthew 5 and 3. It says, God blesses those who are poor. And realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. And see now we realize. The, 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 now we really appreciate. The most high being our power. And we being his people. You see. There was a time when we took that for granted. Okay. And the Lord had to show. Show us like nah. Okay. Y'all need me. <laughs> you know. I'm good. <laughs> you see. And the most high has showcased that. In this captivity, man, that without him, we subjugated to heathen rulership, man. We subjugated to the oppressive and wicked authority of the heathen, man. Okay? But through him, we're finna be an authority, man. <laughs> okay? So we've came to that conclusion within this captivity. Now, people are always trying to figure out, okay, what can we do? What do we need to do? We need the bank. We need more school. We need more education, more degrees. Okay? Uh, uh more people in politics, more of our people in different, no, that, that gets us nowhere, okay, if anything, it gets us further engulfed in this Western, Western, all right, Greco-Roman, all right, society, man, it gets us more lost into that, man, okay, this whole system is BS, man, from top to bottom, and it's going to be a great reset in righteousness, man, okay, we need our power to come wage a war in this place, man, that's, that's the beginning of fixing Okay, the earth, that's the beginning of fixing us, man. We need to be changed. We need to get out these vile bodies, you know, that have been corrupted and tainted in this society, you know, get into new bodies, okay? Hey, we, hey that's, a, that's a, what we need, okay? Verse verse 4, it said, God bless those who mourn, all right? I'm gonna be a, it said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And see, that we have developed a desire in righteousness now, man. We see it, you know. This is what this thing, a major part of the ministry is for, is for righteousness to click, you know. The righteous, that light bulb just go off like this is it. You know, this is how the earth should be ran. This is the standard that should be forwarded in the earth, man. Like we get it, you know. In truth and in sincerity, man, like this is the, you know, this is how the earth should be ruled. You know, as leaders, as, as Israelite men, we understand, okay, the earth needs righteous judges, man. You know, and then we understand the balance of being the judge, man, you know, mercy, okay. You know, along with firmness, okay. No respect to person, like we, we're really learning these things and we learn the why, you know, because the Lord gave us the law, we knew what to do. Okay, but we fully didn't understand the why. And see, now in this captivity, we understand why. Okay, <laughs> we understand why adultery can't go, you know, uh, uh, you know, unpunished. You know, we understand why idolatry can't go unpunished. We understand why witchcraft, you know, uh, uh, shouldn't go unpunished, man. Okay, uh, 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 you know, the alphabet people. We understand why these things 
can't go unpunished in the earth, man. We get it now, man. <laughs> you know? So reading on, let's get this in uh, <clears throat> the book of Baruch. You know, let's get this in the book of Baruch. All right, so this is the book of Baruch chapter three, mm, starting verse eight. All right, this is the book of Baruch chapter three, verse eight. It says, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our father, which departed from the Lord our power. There was the fall. This is the reason why. You know, Jake always asking all these why questions. Why? 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 Well, the scriptures is telling us why, man. The scriptures is telling us that we are in this predicament, all right, based off the wickedness, okay, of our people, man. Based off our iniquities, man, us going off. Okay, sin has always been the problem, man. You know, it's always been the factor, man. Okay? Even to the point that the heathen, okay, they knew that. All right? Let's get that real quick in Judah. Okay? I know it always comes out, but let's drive on the point. Now, this is the book of um, Judah, chapter 5. <coughs> oh, it's a lot. <coughs> It's the book of Judah, chapter 5, verse 19. Well, I'll start it. All right, this is Judah, book of Judah, chapter 5, verse 18. Well, in fact, yeah, I'll start at 17. This Judah 5 and 17, it says, And while and whilst they sin not before their power, they prospered, because the power that hated iniquity was with them. Okay? The power that hated iniquity was with them when we sin not, we prospered. Prosperity comes from obedience, man. True prosperity in the earth for Israel comes through obedience to our power, man. Okay? That's the we we see we understand these things now, man. You know, the gospel, hey, the gospel is full of simplicity, man. You see, Jake be having all these summits and these podcasts trying to discuss what's next for black people, like, nah. We have, okay, what's required of us, man. We have a standard. We have a way. You see, the Bible is full of instructions and righteousness, man. Okay, that draws us close to our power. Okay, and he's going to put us in these positions of prosperity, man. Okay, through Yahweh Shai. Verse 18, already 17 again saying, While they sin not before their power, they prospered because the power they hated for iniquity was with them for when they departed from the way which he appointed them they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captives into a land that was not theirs and the temple of their power was cast to the ground and their cities were taken by their enemies okay so you can talk all day about the bible this and bible old-fashioned and you know that's the white man's book but you still in captivity okay because jake loves that's the white man's book this, you know, the Bible been rewritten and the Bible, you know, we got to get away from that Bible. We go, you know, as you still in captivity and Jake has no solution outside of the Bible. There is no solution for the situation that we in, man. Okay. All these Egyptologists and five percenters and Moors and, you know, all these different Jakes, you know, they think they got some deep wisdom. All right. There, there's no solution amongst their doctrine to get us out of this situation, man. But the Bible gives us a solution, man. Okay, like I say, the Bible is solution-based, man. <laughs> okay? The Bible is all about solutions, you know? And we found the solution with our people, you know? And it's that plague of sin, okay? And through Yahweh Shai, we have a grace period, you know, to rehearse the righteous acts until we're changed, man. You know? We have the we have this grace period to come back to righteousness, man. Okay? We're not gonna get it perfect, but the, the mindset and striving towards righteousness and is and righteousness is clicking. 
you know, like, this is it. This the way, you know, to the, to the point there's no doubt in our mind that this is it, man, you know. There's a book of uh, Baruch, chapter 3, verse 9. It said, Hear, Israel, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. How happening it, Israel, that thou art in thy enemy's land, that thou art waxing old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead. Okay? Sin keeps us in this, this, uh, this perpetual sin keeps us in the defiled state, man. <laughs> you know? We're, we're dead because cause see, when you don't have power, you know, it's like you're dead, man. You see? When you don't have authority as a nation, when you don't have authority in the earth, it's like you're dead, man. Okay? And, we, and we've been defiled, man, with iniquity. Okay? But the Lord, you know, is cleansing us through this word, man. You know? We're coming back to that way through faith in your house shot. Okay? <laughs> Verse uh, 12 says... Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. This is the wisest way to be in the earth. When you go into the standard of the scriptures, this is the wisest way to be in the earth, man. The family structure, agriculture, uh, the, the uh, economic system, man. The year of Jubilee, you know. The, the the way you would, you know, deal with an Israelite that was a servant in your house. Like when you go into all the laws and statutes and commandments, this is the wisest way to be in the earth, man. The land Sabbath, you know, all these things, man. The, 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 the civil affairs, man. Those are the wisest ways to be in the earth. And we see when we stray away from it, look at the chaos and turmoil and violence that plagues, you know, uh, 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 our people, man. Okay. What other nation of people, okay, is living under these conditions, man? Okay, and it's the curse of our disobedience. <laughs> you see? Verse um, 12 says, Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom, for if thou hadst walked in the way of, of the Most High, thou shouldst have dwelled in peace forever. <laughs> okay? Obedience is leading to peace. And see, we see, we get a glimpse of that now. Like as we've been separated from this society and we walk. You know, we're being led, you know, by righteousness, man. There's a peace that comes with that. There's a comfort that comes with that, man. You know, and this is what this is a incentive. Okay, this is the way. You know, keep going in this. Because there's a peace that this world doesn't give. Okay? People have millions of dollars are miserable. Okay? These high paying jobs and are miserable, man. You know, speaking of our people. Okay? But this well, righteousness gives a peace, man. You know? Righteousness gives a certain type of peace, man. Being pleasing to Yahweh by Shema Oshai gives us a certain peace within, man. Like the scriptures say that this world can't take away. <laughs> you see? Verse um, 14 says, Learn where is wisdom, where is strength, where is understanding. And this is our strength. You see, the Lord is finna wage a war in this place on, on behalf of his people, man. Because he sees, okay, there's a remnant that, that thirsts for righteousness, okay? So now it's time to wage war in righteousness, okay? So we can make righteousness the standard in the earth, okay? You got to think, the Heavenly Father is a, king, is, a, is a king, you know? And as he's seeing his people thirsting for righteousness, he's going to make a move to establish that in the earth, man, okay? Through Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is coming to wage that war in righteousness, man, as it says in Revelation. Okay? It says, learn where is wisdom, where is strength, where is understanding that thou mayest know also, where is the length of days and life, and where is the light of the eyes and peace. Okay? So as we, you know, like I say, we get these tokens of peace now through obedience, you know, the Lord is going to make that eternal. Okay? And he's going to be changed where... Hey, we're going to be completely righteous, man. We're going to be perfect, complete, and righteousness, man. You know? So, I just want to um, bring that out. You know, Lord will you, brothers. All right? And you few sisters edified to the next time I say Shalom. Call me Yashallah, Barbara Ball, DTA soon. Shalom.